Good morning and welcome to worship. It is good to wo- it is good to worship on this beautiful morning. I am Grace Maeda, the lay leader for today. As we begin our service, are there any visitors, family members, or friends to introduce? No one. Okay. Later in our worship service, we will have a time for prayers of the people to be shared. Please use the pink sheet. Please use the pink seats located in the pew racks to write down any prayer requests and it will be collected during the hymn of reflection. For our call to worship, please join me by reading the text marked in bold. We call upon the Holy One who is near to us. All your work shall give thanks to you, Holy One, and all your faithful shall bless you. We speak of the glory of your miraculous acts, your abiding presence, and your abundant love. All your works shall give thanks to you, Holy One, and all your faithful shall bless you. With hope and grace, you sustain those in need. You uphold those who have been broken, and you satisfy those who seek a better way. All your works shall give thanks to you, Holy One and all your faithful shall bless you. Let us worship the Lord together through song. Please stand if you are able as we sing five verses of the hymn, Come and Praise the Lord Our King. Please be seated. Let us join our hearts in prayer, and we will end by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Great and mighty God, we seek your presence among us. We desire to hear your voice as it so often gets drowned out by the noise of the world. We pause to consider your works, your word, and your way. Speak to us now in spirit and in truth. Open your hand in our hearts that we may join in this moment of holy encounter. Continue to guide us as we seek to be a community committed to following the path Jesus has marked for us. May the Lord's Prayer remind us of this path, and may our voices remind us that we walk together with others. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
We come now to the sharing of our gifts and resources, a time of offering for God's generosity and with thanksgiving. The ushers will be coming around, and after we will stand and sing together the doxology in Hawaiian. We invite the ushers to come forward. Let us pray. Sustaining God, receive our offerings and magnify them beyond our imagination for the benefit of your creation and this ministry. Cultivate a heart of generosity within us and enable us to witness the abundance that surrounds us. Amen. You may be seated, and I'd like to call forward our keiki for our children's time. Good morning. One quick note, we are working on our Hawaiian for the doxology. So good job, everyone. We'll continue to do it once a month. Um, the tricky part is that it has more syllables, right? So it just it moves a little bit faster than if we sang it in English. So, um, so those are all things. We can take it home and we can practice it at home too, right? So good job, everyone. Okay. So today, good morning, good morning. We, on the front of our bulletin, we have this picture, and we're going to have this picture for the next month. But what is this picture of? Family. Family. What, do you, what else do you notice? Bacon. Bacon? Oh, big kid. Okay. <laughs> yes, there are, there are some people in there. What else? A cross? Yeah. And there's a butterfly and his family. Right, so what does this represent? God's family, yes. And actually, in today's bulletin, had this wonderful piece of or part in the back of the bulletin, and there was some space. So I added the question, what is the family of God, and what does it look like? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, so that we can, we see family of God, we are all the family of God, but what does that really mean, and what does that look like? So we are going to put it up here, and we're going to brainstorm together. Okay, so family of God. What does the family of God look like? 
family of God. All right, so look at your, our picture. What do we have right there in the middle? A cross. And so that's what kind of makes this different, huh? So the cross or Christ, I'm going to write Christ. Oh, I'm going to write Christ right here. Christ is right at the head of the family. And Christ is the one who makes all the decisions that we look to, that we guide, or that guides us. I'm going to stand over here. There you go. Um, so then what are some other, we'll come back to this, but what are some other characteristics? What does a family of God look like? What does it mean? What does it mean to be part of the family of God? Any other thoughts? Oh, okay. So, um, so everyone is connected. Is what the word you use, right? Yeah. There's um, there's peace. That's a good word. We're not fighting. There's peace. There's unity. We're together on what we're doing and how we're doing things. Good. Yeah, thoughts. Well, what does it feel like to have, to be part of the family of God? Good. Thumbs up. <laughs> Feels good, yes. Can we think why it might feel good? Because what? People what? People you can trust and rely on. Oh, good word. Yes, yeah. Shine. Community. Good. You can trust and rely on. Community. What else? Is there any other? Hmm. Great. You're not alone. Yep, not alone. You have support. Good, yes. Huh? Can we, what do you think? Could we open it up to the rest of the congregation too? The rest of the family and see if they have other input? All right. Family, what does it mean to be part of the family of God? What does that look like? What are some things, is there anything else we can add to this list? Love, yes, there is love. Yeah. And service, yes. So service among one another and service outward, is that, what, or what's your, what's your thought? Service, yeah, yeah, okay, good. Service all around, I like that. Good. Any other thoughts? Togetherness, yes. Connected and togetherness, right? It's good. Mm. Mm hmm. So awareness. Attentive to you, right? Yeah. Kind of falls under caring for one another, right? You kind of know what's going on. We're checking in with each other. Right? We're, we're um, seeing how, how each other is doing, and we're attentive and aware. So it's not always we're waiting for people to come and to us. We are also going to them, right? So if you notice someone limping, you'd be like, oh, no, what's wrong? Right? But we do that even throughout the week. Grace. Hmm? Kindness, yes. We are kind to one another. Good. Any other thoughts? Huh? Prayer, yes. We pray for one another. Yes. Good word. All right. Well, that is a perfect um, one to... to um, kind of help wrap this up because today 
our scripture is all about this really special prayer. So when we're doing the scripture today, I want us to really listen to the scripture and to, to hear that prayer. And because it's an opportunity to pray for others and also for us to be prayed for. Isn't that special? Right? So it's not only the fact that we're praying for others, but also that others are praying for us. Isn't that such a gift? I think that's such a gift. Because sometimes there's things that we can't always do to help others, but we can pray for others, right? Now, all of this, where does all, in order to do all of this, where does our strength come from? Where does our focus come from? Yeah, Christ. So do you see how Christ, it all comes from Christ, right? It all trickles down from Christ, right? Christ is the head of the family. So it's not one person or another person. Christ is the one that's the head of it all, of our family. And so we are also all looking to Christ, right? And as we look to Christ, we go, wow, Christ is so awesome. And then it wants us to, to then it helps us to be able to serve others as well, just like how Christ served us. Yeah. Christ is the grandpa. Yes, the, the, or the, the main parent of, of our family. Yes, yeah. God is also, yes, the, the main parent too. Yes, so Christ, um, God the Father, or God the parent, and then the Holy Spirit is the one that's kind of helping us trickle around or uh, serve all around. So as we are going through the book of Ephesians, so at the top it says the book of Ephesians that's on our bulletin. We're going to be staying in the book of Ephesians for the next month, all through August. That's how good the book is. Right? Okay, so we're not going to rush through it, but the book of Ephesians teaches us about the family of God. There's one more thing that we didn't add, or we want to make sure that we add in, that the family of God is open to all. All people. Right? We don't say, no, not you, not you. Oh, you can. No, no. Right? Christ came for everyone, so the family of God is open to all people. So that means that everyone matters in the family of God, right? You matter, and you matter, and you matter, and, you, and everyone matters in the family of God. So your voice matters, your thoughts, your opinions, your questions, all of those things matter and are important in the family of God. Thank you, honey. So I want you to remember that, okay? So you are part of the family of God, and you matter here in the family of God. Sound good? Can we hold on? We'll hold on to these thoughts and think about it. You're also welcome to write down any of the things in your bulletin too, okay? As a reminder for the week. But we're going to continue to learn about what it means to be the family of God. And today we're going to focus in on prayer in our scripture lesson. All right, let's pray. And you are welcome to hold hands or touch elbows or be connected somehow. Can I hold your hand? Thanks. Let's reach. All right. You guys can be in the middle. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, let's pray. Lord, thank you for the family of God. Thank you that we have Christ as our head, that we can all look to Christ, but also thank you that we have so many around us that are loving us and caring for us. Thank you for these wonderful keiki and how they contribute and how much they matter in the family of God. Please bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glad you're here. During your hymn of reflection, you are invited to write down any prayer requests to be included in the pastoral prayer. We remain seated as we sing three verses of My Faith, My Faith Looks Up to Thee.
Let us join our hearts together in prayer. We bow our knees before you, Holy Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name, trusting that you hear us when we call upon you. We pray first for the world. Grant wisdom to those who govern and equip them for the work they are called to do. Be a refuge to the poor and vulnerable. Have mercy upon those swept up by strong winds of violence or prejudice, displacement or terror. Grant all the peoples of the nations to sit down together in peace, recognizing our common need. We pray for the church. Grant wisdom to your people that we may truly seek after you and share the blessings of Christ freely. Reveal to us the provision you supply and open us to every invitation to participate in the signs of your kingdom. Dwell in our hearts through faith that we may be rooted and grounded in love. We pray for our loved ones. Grant wisdom to those who are struggling and strengthen them in your love that they may trust in you. Restore health to those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Fill those who hunger and assure those who doubt. Come to those tossed about by the rough sea of anxiety and speak comfort to those who are afraid. We pray for the prayers upon our hearts and minds and specifically for our congregation. We pray, pray for Glenn Shiroma, Kathy's cousin who has terminal brain cancer. We ask for your peace, for your presence to be known, for your healing, and for you to be present with the family, especially in these days. We also pray for Shelly, who's driving around in Kona this week. We ask for protection and safety. We pray for Sue's friend, Sandy. May God continue to guide and support her. You know the situation, O oh Lord, and we lift her to you. We also pray for Grace. We thank you that today is her birthday, and we pray for a year of happiness, safety, learning, um, and to watch over her at Hilo Inter. We thank you, Lord. With all these and all the prayers of our hearts, we call upon you, O Lord, until by your word and outstretched arms, this world reaches the place towards which it is going, the land of your eternal presence. We praise and thank you. Amen. For our scripture reading, we are continuing our journey through the New Testament book of Ephesians. You are welcome to follow along in your bulletin as we read from chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. Let us open our hearts and minds to the Holy Spirit as we listen for the word of God. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth der derive derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may fill to the measure of all fulfillment of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Thanks be to God for the blessing of scripture in our lives.
Isn't this morning's scripture reading just beautiful? Yes, <laughs> yes yay. <laughs> yes, and thank you, Anthony. To read that someone is on bended knee in prayer on behalf of other people is a gift. Paul, the author, was writing to the church in Ephesus, and it was most likely written to also circulate among more churches throughout the region, offering heartfelt words of encouragement and edification. When I read these words, I picture Paul on his knees in a Roman prison with his arms raised and blessing the people, the people that he knows and the people that he doesn't know. And this blessing echoes for generations and generations. As we read this today through the Holy Spirit, we too can receive this humble prayer that Paul offered for the wider, greater church. Let's look at what Paul specifically prayed for. And we can look at this both individually for ourselves and for the church. For us today, we can look at this for our congregation, where we are at in this specific time and season. When this was written, it was to communities of faith. So when Paul writes you, it is in the plural. So you all. Right? This gives a strong reminder of the collective community-oriented mentality that was prevalent in the ancient world and the desire to have the whole community to be strengthened and encouraged. So today, we can apply and receive this prayer both for our community and also for our own individual faith journey. So let's walk through this passage together slowly. And as we do, let's be attentive to what we can hold on to as a prayer for ourselves, for our church, our family, our community, and so forth. We can be attentive to the question, what do you receive and pray for from this passage? Paul says in verse 16, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Paul's first prayer is that God will strengthen you in your inner being. This prayer is concerned first and foremost with the, with the inner spiritual life, not the outward expressions of faith, but what is going on within us, the things that only God knows and sees. This is speaking to those feelings that stir in our depths and what we often might have to put aside or shove deeper simply so that we can keep going. Well, God cares about those feelings and what goes on in the inner parts of us. Here we have an ancient prayer for the strength of our inner being. There is more to this prayer, right? And it is all of the additional descriptions which give a fuller understanding. Surrounding the prayer of being strengthened in your inner being is that it will be done with the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit, and it will come out of the depths of God's glorious riches. So our inner being can be strengthened with power from the Holy Spirit, from the endless supply of God's glory and riches. Sounds pretty good, right? <laughs> this also means that the power and strength of your inner spirit doesn't come from your, your own works and successes. And that, to me, is one of the most beautiful parts of this prayer. Hear the prayer with slightly different words. I pray that your depths feel strong, courageous, confident, settled, and content. I pray that you will be strengthened not because of what you have done, but because of what God has done. Then it comes to the why. Why do we pray for this? Or what is the motivation behind this prayer? Well, the passage says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. 
we may live a life following Christ, but this prayer expresses the desire to have Christ dwell within us. It is walking and living with Christ and not only for Christ. Christ dwelling within us is saying that I don't go and visit where God is. No, instead Christ is with me wherever we go and he is here to stay. We don't have to worry that today I have Christ, but, but we shall maybe see about tomorrow if he sticks around or if I behave properly. No, he will stay. Christ has made his dwelling within us. This word is used to describe someone who has made their home in a specific place and they are no longer a traveler going from place to place. Christ dwelling within us means we are walking daily with him, having our faith encouraged and strengthened through this relationship. But what happens then when we have Christ dwelling within us? Well, it says we become rooted and established in love. With Christ dwelling in us, our foundations are based on love and grace, the gift given through Christ. That source of love is there within us. And here we are encouraged to put our roots down into love. The word picture here is a strong tree. And the soil that the roots are in is love. The second word picture here is a foundation to build a strong house on. And we are to build on love. So as we walk with Christ, we are doing so to love, to love God and to love others. We are being strengthened with a power from the Holy Spirit, from the riches of God's glory to walk with Christ as we learn to love. Paul's prayer goes on to say in verse 17, I pray that you, who are you? The ones being rooted and established in love. Why? Because Christ dwells in you. So I pray that you may have power together with all the Lord's people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge. This prayer, this is a prayer because this is something that is learned. Learning and experiencing the depth of God's love is a lifelong journey. When we get to the point where we feel so immersed in God's love, this prayer is saying that there is more. <laughs> and I hope that you will continue to experience it. Continue to dive deeper and deeper into God's love. It is vast. It is beyond what we can see, know, or understand. And this prayer encourages that we will continue to experience it. Continue to swim in God's love. Then, as you are surrounded by God's love through Christ, through the Holy Spirit, with the endless supply of God's riches and glory, then the last prayer is that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Contentment, strength, peace in your inner being come from being filled to the very top with all that God is. With that also comes love. God is love, and this prayer points to being filled with love as much as we can handle. This isn't only for us to keep for ourselves, but it is to become loving people. Through this prayer, I hear, I pray that you don't have to work so hard to feel strengthened in your inner being. Instead, I pray that you would float in the endless water of God's riches and glory, allowing God's love to surround you so that you can experience a life with Christ, a life that is rooted and established in God's love, a love that is beyond comprehension. I pray that you would feel satisfied and content because you have been filled with all of the love, peace, and goodness of God. 
I open my hands to receive this prayer and blessing. And I pray this also over all of us. I also hope that this can be our own prayer. When things are challenging, we can first say, God, strengthen me. When we are feeling pulled in many directions, unsettled or inadequate, we can pray, Christ, dwell within me. When we are feeling depleted and defeated, we can pray, Lord, fill me with your very being. This prayer is beautiful because it starts with our inner being, with what's going on within us. It first addresses us, our heart, our spiritual well-being. I mean, what a gift. What a blessing. This is the God we worship, one who cares how we are doing in our inner being and says, I want to strengthen you. I want to give you the power that you need I want you to know how grand my love is. And God wants us to do this so that we can be strengthened to then love outwardly for God's glory. There is a circular motion to this prayer, which leads us to the final part in verse 20, which says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church, in Christ Jesus, throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. From a place of inner strength, filled with the fullness of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, with Christ dwelling within us, God does immeasurably more than we ask or even imagine. What we do, whether individually or collectively, needs to come out of the strength of our inner being, the place where God has filled and where Christ dwells. Then it isn't us doing it. It isn't our own power and might. It is God's the one who can do more than we imagine. Wouldn't we want that power instead of our own limited strength and perspective? Well, it starts within ourselves. It starts within our church. This prayer helps us to be attentive to what is going on first within us, and then it moves outward. My hope is that we can embrace this passage and make it our own prayer. And for each person to know that your spiritual well-being is important. Our faith journey needs encouragement and it takes intentionality. Then as we are experiencing the depth of God's love and strength given by the Holy Spirit, it can then move us into action. Paul was in prison when he wrote this, and he couldn't go out and travel among the people, serving in ways that he used to. So he prayed and wrote letters, a way that he could love outwardly in his particular circumstances. When we may be un unsure of what we can do, we can have the posture of Paul, bowing before the Lord with humility and reverence praying that others may know and experience a life with Christ. And not only now, but for generations to come. And as we do, we join with all the saints who have gone before us and living now, praying for the spiritual well-being of others so that people may know in their hearts the depths of God's love. With that, I invite us into a time of prayer. And as a physical expression of our hearts, I invite us to open our hands, similar to opening our hearts to the Spirit. So as we pray, with our hands open, may we receive this prayer for ourselves and for the church. God of grace, 
hope, and love. I pray for each person of our church family, that they may feel your presence and be strengthened each and every day. You know the struggles, but may there be encouragement and persistence. You know what brings delight and joy, so may there be opportunities to incorporate those joys into the day. I pray for our congregation as a whole. May we continue to discern your will and guidance as we walk forward together. I pray that we can move forward without fear, but with excitement and curiosity. Give us courage to do what is needed and wisdom to let go what is not of this time. We humbly pray in your presence. And now, church family, let us turn our hands outward to pray for others and bless others. We pray for our loved ones, our community, our friends, and neighbors. We pray for the generations we know and the generations to come. We pray that they may know the depth of your love and may they see it in us, all for your glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen. What a blessing it is to hear and be refreshed by God's word, being reminded of God's love and to join together in the gift of prayer. Let us seal our time with the song, Blessed Assurance, a reminder that the assurance we have through Christ leads us to praising our Savior all the day long. We will remain seated as we sing two verses of Blessed Assurance. As we close our worship service, we are reminded how wonderful it is to be in community with one another on this faith journey. We are glad each of you are here today, and thank you, Uncle Anthony, for today's wonderful music. For the life of our Ohana, please see the worship bulletin for announcements. Are there any announcements to highlight or any additional items to share? I always have some. Um, so there are things in our bulletin, uh, but one thing I want to highlight is the Keiki Health Day uh, event happening Saturday, August 10th. And so word is starting to get out. We sent out an email. Um, uh, registration is online on our church website, so you can point people to our church website, uh, and then uh, there's an online registration form there. If you'd like to volunteer, please see Kiki um, or Susie. I know Kiki is, is out, so... Um, I'm volunteering, Susie. <laughs> Thanks. Um, lastly, today is Grace's birthday. <laughs> Hi, good morning. And so uh, uh, we do have cupcakes to celebrate afterwards, um, and so we are um, grateful to be able to celebrate together with our church family. So, yes, and thank you, Grace. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks.
Thank you for the many ways all of you participate in the life of our church during the week and on Sunday mornings. Let us close our time together through song and then our friendship circle. Those who are able, please stand as we sing three verses of Here I Am. Let us gather around this chapel for our closing friendship circle and benediction. Each week as we make our circle we are connected. We are the family of God. And, and this circle does go beyond all who are here, right? We are connected with so many sisters and brothers through Christ. That is the gift. And this is how we can also pray for one another as well. And as we go forth from here, know that we go forward together as a family and with other family members, and we go forward in Christ. And so may the love of God the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you now. Amen.